Well, it's great to have you back. I'm your host, Cindy Watson. And today, I can't wait to introduce you to Dr. Greg Persley. And we're going to be talking about how to negotiate past your BS, which he will explain in a moment. So welcome, Greg. It is so great to have you here. Well, thank you, Cindy. I appreciate you having me. I hope I can provide some value for your listeners and uh, make it entertaining, maybe share some <laughs> stories. You never know. We'll see. <laughs> Sounds perfect. And for those of you out there who don't know, Dr. Greg Persley, otherwise known as Dr. G, he's a catalyst for personal growth, and he shows people how to not only reach but exceed their goals by harnessing the power of their belief system. So that's the BS we're talking about here. And he's the creator of Dr. G's personal growth program. He's the author of Fix Your BS and the owner of PC Medical Centers. So if you're feeling stuck or you're not reaching your potential, then he's the guy you want to talk to. So Greg, I often say that negotiating our mindset is our first and most important negotiation. And it sounds like your fix your BS systems, you know, involves negotiating our mindset to show up more powerfully and get more of what we want in life. So tell us a bit about the BS protocol. You know, what is it? Yeah, well, everything starts with a thought. Everything starts with a thought. So I'll give you a little bit of history where this came from. But um, Fix Your BS is actually called Fix Your Belief Systems. It's a five-step process in five major pillars of life, relationships, business, or career. You can interchange those. Yep. Finances, health, and faith. And if you're playing at a high level at all five of those things, your life is pretty fulfilled and you're content and you're happy. Problem is, is that most people either have none of those pillars or they have like one of them that are really good. And then all the other ones are crumbling. And so I've got some really great, great stories I'll share in a little bit. But um, it all started because my wife and I went through a pretty rough time. We have two children. Our second child was born with dwarfism. He had a lot of medical complications. Yeah. And he ended up spending, out of his first year, he spent six months at Children's Hospital a couple hours away from us. I had a business. I was trying, that was only our only income. And uh, so we went through it stress-wise. For eight years, he had a trachean event. And so it was literally focusing on keeping him alive and keeping yeah. our family together. And it was like, survive. That's where yeah. we were at day in, day out. And so after that eight years, we had to, after he started to get better eight years later, we had to really kind of reassess where we were. And that's where I realized, like, I didn't like my relationship or my finances or my career. Yeah. And I didn't like myself really. And the choices I was making. And I was just in a place where I didn't like, I, I, asked myself the question, can I keep doing what I'm doing the rest of my life? And there was the answer was no. Yeah. And so I had to figure out how do I rebuild that? And that's where Fix Your BS came from because we had to change our belief about things. We had to change our thought processes about things. And yeah. that's where it came from. Well, I love that. And I, I read about your second son. It really resonated with me. And I, my heart goes out to you because our daughter had to have open heart surgery at two months and we spent three months in critical care and your world gets about like this big, so focused, yeah. everything just seems. So I can't imagine eight years of that constant adrenal overload, right? Of <laughs> everyday crisis. So that's all. And, and you're right. Like you, everyone can relate it, which is so cool. That story is so it's unique, but it's relatable to everyone. Everyone yeah. I talk to literally has something in their life where they're like, oh my gosh, I dealt with this or that. And so it's not which one's better, which one's worse. It's really just looking at it and going, well, okay, how can we look at this situation that I'm in and how can I, I don't want to say use it because people yeah. take that incorrectly. How can I make the best of it? And that's where it comes from your thought processes and you have to pay attention to what you're actually thinking. And most people never do that. Yeah. They never take the time to learn about themselves and, and learn about that. And I was there. <laughs> I was there for a long yeah. time. Yeah. And I really want to circle back to that thought because I think people really underestimate the importance of uh, that, you know, our reality is determined by our thoughts and the meaning we attach them. So I, I want to circle back to that. But I, I just want to put a pin for our listeners as well. You talked about those five pillars and I think we so often in life, everybody's focused on one thing. Maybe, maybe it's our health right now, or maybe for a lot, most people, it's like that, you know, that career moving forward. And it's not, it's no wonder we don't have balance. You know, my daughter and I created what we call a purpose planner because all the planners and agendas that they are to do driven and they don't really look mm -hmm. at making sure you've got that balance in your life. So really wanted to put a pin in that for our listeners and we'll circle back to that. But if you can go a little deeper on that idea about the thoughts that everything comes down to our thoughts and you know, how does that end up when, once you start to get intentional about that, how does that impact your life? Okay, well, go back to anything that happens to you is just an event. Okay, so most people say, well, that was good or that was bad. It's just an event. It is something that occurred 
and you as the person put the meaning into the event. And so your thought process is what actually starts that whole process. The thought of, is this good or is this bad? You literally, you don't realize it, but you ask yourself that question and you say, oh, this is bad. And yeah. why is it bad? Why did you label it bad? And it's simply because you've had some experience similar to that thing that's occurring. And you said, I didn't like the experience before. So therefore this experience, because it's similar is bad. And if you don't take a moment to really think about that, there's, there's a gap there. You know, there's actually a really great book by uh, Dyer and it's called Get in the Gap. I would recommend that one. But it, it just, there's a gap there where you make the decision and you don't realize you make it because your body, your brain is so efficient. It yeah. does not want to think and pay attention to everything that happens all the time. So it will make connections. This equals that. Yeah. This event, this a feeling, this whatever equals that. It's good, it's bad, whatever. And so because of that, you become very efficient. And that's good in certain ways. But also if you never reevaluate it, it can be bad in other ways. And so you have to pay attention to what you're actually thinking. And so asking yourself questions and being very introspective is very important. I actually have a talk that I do. I, I know I'm, but there's a talk called RIP. It's one of my favorites that I do. It's a keynote talk and it's called RIP. RIP stands for obviously rest in peace for most people. But way, the way I use it is, is, is you have to kill your old self off to become a new, better yeah. inversion version of yourself. Yeah. And it starts with retrospection. You look at your past, you look at things in, that have occurred. Then you look at introspection, which is how you view those things, basically internally learning about yourself. And then you do something called projection, which is looking into the future and projecting what you actually want. And then there's a whole process of how do you move in that direction and consistently go. But I love that simply because you people don't realize you cannot hold on to who you are and become something you want to become. And uh, it all starts with the space right yeah. between your ears. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so much packed in there. And I want to come back to that. But I want to circle back to at the start when you talked about that idea about choice, right? I think we so often don't recognize that this is a choice we get to make every day. So flip that story. And, and when you talked about that gap, it resonated with me that, you know, that infamous sort of quote out there that between every stimulus and response, there is a pause. And in that pause lies your power to make the choice, right? So you can choose to keep telling that same old story, oh, this is bad, this is bad, and your brain's gonna go looking for examples to prove, oh, this is bad, or you can flip the story that you're telling yourself and choose to attach a different meaning to it. So I, I thought that was a beautiful point. I wanna really put a pin in that for our listeners. And also I'd love if you could go take us a little deeper because I, I know you were trying to hurry up there thinking that you you wanted to wind up on that answer, but that RIP, because, you know, we often hear that if we want our life to change, we need to change. And, you know, I was going to ask you what's one of the most effective ways to identify our ideal belief system. And I, I gather RIP mm -hmm. is one of those modes. So can you give us a little example, maybe or context about how our listeners can apply it? Yeah, absolutely. I, so we live in a very fast paced world. There, there's constant stimulus. The moment you wake up, yeah. a lot of people reach for their phone the moment they wake up or they'll flip on the TV or they'll flip on the radio or they're thinking about their day. And Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about this a lot, where if you're thinking about the things that occurred in your past and not thinking about the future of what you're trying to actually create, what ends up happening is you just replicate what you did in the past. You just yeah. keep recreating the same future and the same present. And so we live in a very, very oh man it, it, this world is so noisy it's just yeah. a noisy world it's just yeah. constantly coming at you and so because of that we don't take time to actually think about our thoughts we don't take time to think about ourselves and who we are and what we really want and there you know a lot of people use the word meditation which you can use that but when people think of meditation a lot of times they have this oh you got to sit a certain way and you got to do it a certain way and you got to whatever it's it's not that you have to do it a certain way. It is literally meditation is all about learning about yourself and focusing with intent about what you want and how you want things to be and learning from that experience about drawing from the information that you may not be aware of because you're distracted with other noise. And so that's the purpose of meditation. And it's so important. And no, I mean, so few, few, few people really do that. Yeah. You got to learn about yourself. So that's where the introspection really, really comes from. Because once you learn about you, what you want and your experiences you've had and how you've 
identified as those uh, what those experiences are, whether they're good or bad. And you look at your past and you start reanalyzing things like a really great example of that. I can look into my past and I can look at how I was raised. And I talk about my dad a lot because I took things to mean a certain thing. Like he raised me to be, he wanted me to always be better. Okay. Now that can be taken good or bad, but because he wanted me to be raised better, he would never give me the joy or satisfaction of, Hey, good job. You did great. Yeah. Okay. So what I took that to mean was as a, as a teenager was that I wasn't valuable because yeah. I could never do good enough. I could never be good enough. And what I found is a lot of people experienced that a lot of people have dealt with this in their life where they took it and they have low self-esteem. Now I had that until I was about 21. Yeah. And luckily I met my wife and she basically went, wait a second. And one of the, one of the best ways, and I'll tell you, but she basically created what I call the asset list. And one of the best things people can do is create their asset list. Yeah. All the things that are great about you. She yeah. said, wait, you're going to be a doctor at the age of 23 and you play baseball and you're, you're pretty good looking and you sing and you play guitar and you're a nice person and you're honest. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, you sound awesome. Like what's your catch? And I, at the time I was like, well, I live with my grandma. She goes, yeah, but you're in grad school. That's, that's cute. You're not like, you know, yeah. living with your grandma. And, and so that's one of the things they can do. They can just introspectively, like just write down all the things that they think are great about themselves. Yeah. And you'd be surprised because your mind will want to tell you all the things that are not good about yourself, yeah. but you need to get rid of that and just start writing down and be like, you know what? I do show up and I am this and I am that, and I'm good at that. And that'll give you a good starting point yeah. to say, oh, I need to start believing that stuff about myself, yeah. which is where the belief systems come into play. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny. I, that is so, I, and first off, I was, I was not laughing at you. I was laughing because when you said about your dad, it was like, oh my gosh, like de deja vu. Cause my dad it would matter if I got 99% on a test, it would be what happened to that last percent. Right. It was just like never yeah. quite enough. And I remember hating flexed arm hang, you know, you used to have those physical things where you could get your fitness awards. And that was always my, my nemesis. And I remember practicing once and my dad's supposed to be timing me. And I'm like, Hey, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I've got it nailed this time. He told me I had some that I'd only been doing it for like 10 seconds or whatever, thinking that would push me to go further. And I was like, to hell with this. If that's only yeah. 10 seconds, right? Like I've, I've done, I've done. So I, I, I hear you. And I love that idea about the asset list. I call it a brag list. And you know, it's yeah. so funny, Greg, cause when I do like groups of women in particular, but I think this applies across gender and I ask them to list 25 things that they love about themselves, half mm. the room or more sit there shell shocked, like literally just not able, we don't do it enough. So thank you for, for raising that. I think it's such an important uh, now, now here's here's an extra part to that because and you can take this and, and use it because what I found, first of all, is that I've listened to a lot of the great speakers and, and personal coaches and, and self-help people over the years. And even back to like Napoleon Hill, you look at him, he's kind of the, the beginning person, the guru of that, yeah. but all the way through all the decades up until now. And I found there's there's principles that we all use that are very similar. And I'm like, that, there's a reason why. It's yeah. because those are the principles of what people should be doing. And that's why people like you and myself and other amazing people, Tony Robbins and Les Brown and all these guys have the same type of thing. It's I call it, it's it's the same package with different wrapping paper. Yeah, it's, so you know, true. it's like, it's the same principle, with different wrapping paper. But anyway, the point that I was going to make there is a second step to that, because I do this with college students a lot. I'll ask them to write all the things that they don't like about themselves first. Mm-hmm. And what I found is, is they can make a list that's like, you have to quit them, get them to quit writing. Yeah. And then we do the opposite. Okay. Make your list that you, things that you love about yourself that are great about yourself, your asset list. And there's generally like you know, four or five things and that's it. Yeah. And I'm like, do you guys see the problem here? This is what you believe about yourself. Yeah. You believe you're not good enough in all these ways and you're only good enough in these. And the reality really is. That's how you're going to see the world and how you believe other people see you yeah. when, when it does, it isn't like that. So take your, you know, take that brag list or that, uh, um, uh, oh, it's called, somebody calls it the cookie jar. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of who that is, but anyway, it, it, take that list and just 
reread it and go, you know what? Maybe I am pretty cool at a lot of yeah. a lot of amazing things. Yeah, and we all have shortcomings. But if you focus on those shortcomings and, and continue to build that list, then you become this shortcomings person, not this yeah. asset person. Yeah. So really great exercise for awesome. people to do. And I, I want for our listeners out there, I challenge you to do do that exercise, right? Because I, I think that's a great visual representation of the beliefs that you are carrying around that are going to be blocks for you. If your negative list is longer than your acid or brag list or whatever you want to call it, then you know you've got some work to do on clearing out that BS and flipping your belief systems. Now, Greg, with COVID, you know, I hate a touchy subject, but I, I think at the very least we can agree that, you know, many people feel stuck, you know, suffering from loneliness or isolation, the impact of that isolation, lack of motivation. How can your sort of system help them maybe negotiate past some of those blocks? Yeah, so I love that question. So what's interesting is you just you just you just said like COVID, you know, oh touchy situation, and it is for a lot of people. But I want you to understand was COVID was an event. Yeah. Okay. It was an event. Yeah. It 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 doesn't. It, there's events that happen all day every day that have no, no bearing on you, and you don't view them as positive or negative. You made a belief about whether COVID, not you, but yeah, people yeah, yeah. <laughs> make their own belief about yeah. whether COVID was good or bad. Now, it's not to say that things didn't happen during that time that were unfortunate or that were painful or that were emotionally draining because they probably were, but it doesn't mean it had to be a bad thing, okay? What I mean by that is if you take it and you look at the event and you take a moment and you, you ask the self, which is my, my favorite question, is... What's good about this? Yeah. Okay. What's good about this? Another way to phrase that is what am I supposed to learn from this? Yeah. And I do that for any positive or negative thing that people would view into my life. If something that happens to me is uncomfortable, I go, what am I supposed to be learning from this? Yeah. What lesson am I supposed to be learning here? And then if you look at it from that part perspective, it's not, oh my gosh, this is bad. It's what am I supposed to be learning from this? This is happening for a reason. And I believe that there's some seed of knowledge in this thing. And so then I attack it. I dive in because it's exciting. Like I'm going to learn something from this thing. And in four years of doing that, I have had more personal growth, business growth, yeah. financial growth, relationship growth than in my entire life, because I attack the things not that are happening, not as a, oh, what, why is this happening? It's It's happening for a reason. What can I learn from it? Yeah. And so I would ask everybody to take that approach to really learn about themselves. And, and if you, if you <laughs> approach things differently, you will get a different result. If you don't like the result you're getting, you have to approach it differently. So all I'm saying is take a different approach sometimes. Oh, so good. Hey, we definitely have parallel thought processes on that. I, yeah. I was so disheartened at the beginning. Like there was such desperation at the beginning. Of I started doing Facebook lives every day on exactly that point about find the gifts mm -hmm. that are here, right? I mean, the opportunity for connection, uh, the decrease in pollution at the beginning and unprecedented levels, an opportunity for people to just reset and determine a new way of being. So what a beautiful perspective to be able to bring to it. Now, I know you're a big advocate of sort of time-saving steps as well to help you know people build the life they want or negotiate the life they want, as I often say. Can you share a few of those sort of simple time-saving steps that can help our listeners negotiate the, their best lives? Yeah, time-saving steps are, it comes down to one word, and that word is faith. And I don't mean religion. I mean faith. There's a big difference. So faith yeah. and belief belief kind of go hand in hand. But basically, faith is seeing something in, in the unknown. It, it's something you can't see, you can't touch, but you just you have faith that it's going to occur. And that comes down to things called intuition. Your intuition kicks in. Yeah. And intuition is something that you're like, you know, and uh, here's a great example. In 2020, so we'll, let's put all this together. In 2020, so you said I'm an owner of PC Medical Centers, which you can you can see here. PC Medical Centers is an integrated medical company. We work with four main things. We do bracing, rehab, chiropractic, and we use regenerative medicine. Okay. Before that, before COVID, I was a chiropractor. And so when COVID hit, I took that as an opportunity to say, what can I do in order to make the best of this situation? Yeah. And so I took the time that we had been given and said, I'm going to take my company and integrate it medically so I can help more people live um, fuller, happier lives and healthier lives. Because I saw that that was probably an opportunity. Now, when I went to do that, everyone in my life said, don't do that. Yeah. Everyone, <laughs> everyone, my wife, 
my yeah. office manager, my uh, staff, everybody said, don't do this. And they were coming from their perspective. But I had had enough life experience that the intuition said, this is right. This is yeah. this needs to happen. Now, three years later, the company has grown tremendously and we're helping more people than we ever would have been able to help before. Now, I'm not always saying that intuition is 100% because it's based on your experiences. Yeah. But that gut feeling of like, oh, this feels right, yeah. mattered. And you should listen to that. And the more you know yourself, the more likely it is you're making the correct decision. Yeah. But correct decisions come from experience and experience comes from the wrong decisions. So yeah. all I'm saying is <laughs> dive into something if it didn't work, who cares? Move on, learn something from it and go to the next thing until you figure out your path. And that's what Fix Your PS is all about. It's about figuring out instead of living someone else's beliefs that they have handed to you, you should be yeah. this and you should be that and you should do this and your job should be this and you should, 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 should figure out what life means to you so you can live a fulfilled life. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Mm. So nice. Nice. I like that piece about trusting your intuition. I, th I think we used to, like if you think First Nations people, I mean, had tremendous intuition, tremendous capacity to tap in. And somewhere along the line, I think we lost our faith in our, as you say, that faith piece in our intuition. So, and I, I think the beauty of that is when we trust our intuition, we also set the stage for other people to trust us. Because when we don't trust ourselves, when our belief system has us beating up on ourselves, we do not inspire trust in other people. And that certainly is a kiss of death in negotiations, communication, and negotiating your best life. So what a great point. And, and speaking well, of negotiation, do you, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, I was just saying, I was just going to say, you know, there's books about that, you know, sell or be sold. It's, it yeah. is a book by Grant Cardone. And he yeah. talks about, you have to believe it. You're not trying to sell the person on a product or service. You're trying to sell them on the fact that you believe what you're doing is going to help them. Yeah. That's really what it is. It's the belief that I'm here for you to serve you, to give to you. How can I help you do that? And no one else is going to do that better than me. And I have faith that and the belief that things are going to move in the right direction if we work together on this that's that's what how sales should be yeah. you shouldn't try to sell somebody something that that they they don't need but if you don't believe in it that's going to transfer over to the other person so how can you transfer your a belief to about something if you don't yeah. believe it it's going to yeah. feel like people feel that they know yeah. it they're like mm, something feels off here yeah that's and, so and, and people are so intuitive and they don't realize this but you know, the sixth sense, not the movie, the sixth yeah. sense. That <laughs> when you walk into a room, everyone has experienced this. When you walk into a room and people are mad at each other, you've heard this phrase, yeah. you can cut the tension yeah. with a knife, yeah. right? What is that? How do you know that yeah. that feeling? It's the vibration of those people. They are emitting this, this vibrational, yeah. you know, uh, frequency that you can actually measure. And Anger is different than joy. It emits a different vibra vibrational frequency. And people pick that up. So if you don't totally believe in what you're doing and you're like ee, wavering a little bit, people will figure that out. They'll they'll feel that. Yeah. And that's basically the same thing. And so you got to be aware of your own self to where you're totally convicted. And I don't mean convincing yourself until you're convicted. I'm just mean like, <laughs> mean like if you know yourself, yeah. you will know that, oh, I am doing this for the right reasons. I'm on my mountain. I have my vision and I can see it. And just because someone else tells me that it's not possible, that's just because they're not on my mountain. Yeah. That just means they can't see it. They're on their hill. Yeah. I can't see what they can see. They can't see what I can see. And yeah. all you can do is have faith, belief, go into action, and then just prove it over time because proof is in the pudding, right? Proof, proof yeah. is in the actions. Yeah. And everything is energy, as you were saying. That's why you can feel that tension and cut it with a knife. We are emitting constantly. So your belief system is going to impact on the energy that you put off, which is going to impact on how people react to you. So it really is the foundation of being able to negotiate that better life for yourself. So, so important. I love uh, the work that you're doing. Now, what was and one of the, go ahead. I just want to add one more thing, because yeah, when you say create a better life for themselves, here's here's the problem. Most people... And this is what I work with them a lot with. Most people don't know what they actually want in life. Yeah, so how true. can you create a vision if you don't even know yourself? You can't create a vision of what you want if you don't even know you, yourself and spend time focusing on that and going, yeah. what do I actually want? Because you know, I have a shortcut process, which is create a vision, take constant, consistent action toward that vision and have faith that will occur. That's my three-step shortcut. 
Yeah. Say that again. Create a vision, take constant, consistent action and correct. If you can constant, consistent, correct action toward that. <laughs> and, um, and then have faith or belief it will occur. Yeah. And, and, and that's one of the biggest mistakes I made in life. I tried to force things to occur. I tried to push physical reality into where I wanted it to be. Yeah. And that is the most frustrating thing. Yeah. <laughs> So if you're in alignment with yourself and you can spend time with yourself and learn about yourself over time, then what happens is, is you, you start to realize what you actually want yeah. and that vision of what you want. If you can focus on that and take constant, consistent, correct action toward that vision and get rid of any expectation of when and how that vision will occur, which is called faith and belief, yeah. then, then you are content in the process of getting the thing you want. And yeah. not only that, in that, in that you're literally attracting it to you as opposed to trying to force it to yeah. you. It's just a much better way to do it. Yeah. I, I like, it's such an important, I want to amplify that again for our listeners. I want to make sure you really take that in and hold on to it because we live in such a to-do driven society as we talked about earlier. And as Dr. G said, you know, we live in such a busy sort of overstimulated society. We rarely take the time to really think about what we want and that, you know, whether it's the five pillar system that Dr. G talked about, or, you know, look at your life broadly and all the categories of your life and set goals to have a vision, have a dream and think big on that so that you can start moving towards. I think so often we live in this one day mindset, you know, when this happens, then I'll do it. You know, when, when the kids are growing or when the kids are in school or when the kids are out of school, or when I get this extra degree or when I get this extra, whatever, as opposed to today, just allowing yourself the space and grace to be able to come up with that vision, get clarity around that in every aspect of your life. And, Cindy, and that comes Cindy, back that to that. A, Go ahead. Sorry. That was, that was, Cindy, that was a great, great point. What you're talking about. So many people put happiness off into the future. Yeah. I'll be happy when, yeah. but what they're really doing is they're developing the habit of putting happiness into the Absolutely. future. They're not happy now. And then when your future occurs, the thing you were going after, the to-do, the driven person that gets the thing that they thought was going to make them happy, what they find is that they're not, it didn't make them happy. Or it maybe did for a day. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yay. And they celebrate. And then they go, now what? Because they've developed the habit of happiness tomorrow. Yes. But ha tomorrow never comes. Yeah. Garth Brooks said it. What if yeah. <laughs> So it must be true. That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just had that conversation with my middle kid yes, the other day about that. You know, if you're always thinking the grass is greener, this is a recipe for a very unhappy life, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to find that gratitude and get clarity about where you want to go. What is your vision and be able to live into it with appreciation and enjoying the journey on the way. So definitely uh, resonating. Now, what's one of the most surprising sort of or shocking things that you discovered while researching for your, your book? Hmm, man, that it's, it's simpler than you think. Oh, nice. <laughs> it is, it is simpler <laughs> than you think. And, and if you listen to that phrase, it is simpler than you think, like think your thought process. Yeah. It's just, it's not as hard as we make it to be. And if you can get into that flow of, of, of having faith and belief and the flow of the universe, if you will, yeah. you'll, you'll start to, to glide through life effortlessly comparatively to someone that's trying to force things to happen. Yeah. See, that's where stress comes. Stress comes from uh, trying to force things to occur and you start to, Oh, I'm trying to make it happen. Yeah. If you just go, look, here's the outcome I'm really looking for. Here's the vision. And whether that outcome occurs or not is not where happiness is. Yeah. It's just the, the, Actions toward the vision is where you should find the happiness. Yeah. The, hey, you know, at the end of the day, I look back at my day and I go, what did I do today that moved me toward my visions that I'm looking for in all five of those pillars? Yeah. And what's great is you have control over your actions. You have control over what you're thinking about. Tony Robbins talks about that. What you focus yeah. on is what you feel, which is what you're thinking about will create a physical, emotional yeah. reaction. And so when you're, you know, upset about something, what are you thinking about? What are you focusing on? So it is literally simpler than you think. And people are always looking for the secret or the answer. And they're jumping from this thing to that thing. And it's literally just looking inside you and figuring out what it is that makes you content. 
and not caring what other yeah. people think about that. Yeah. And once you can do that, that's what actually, that's what confidence really is. You're confident when you go, you know, I know who I am. I know what I want. I'm moving toward it. And I don't care what anyone else around me is telling me whether it's cool or good or whatever or not. Because you have to realize they're only saying it from their perspective yeah. and whether they could do it or not. And uh, most people can't see your vision. So, you know, they're going to yeah. they're going to go, oh, you can't do that. And you go, well, yeah. watch me. Watch me. Oh, I can do that. So many great messages in there as well. And I get it's, oh my gosh, was I guilty of that pushing, right? That pushing energy, mm. that striver, driver, achiever, like in full on gear, just push. And oh my gosh, it's like the salmon swimming upstream as opposed to just allowing, right? It's the difference between that push versus pulling. And uh, that is a huge. And I love that you really hit on that point about this being personal. My gosh, we are so conditioned to get our sense of value externally. And you think about, you know, kids growing up, they're all so busy trying to do what they think other people expect of them to fit in. And almost every major successful person in the history of the world are the people who didn't fit in, weren't the sheep, but stood out with their own vision, right? Whether it's in the music industry to, to the great thought leaders of the world, they were people who were not following the path. So choose your path based on what you're passionate about and not what you believe other people expect of you or what other people would define as success, right? That is a personal journey if you're looking for happiness. So what a, what a great message. And I can't believe how quick our time has gone here. I will have to do a, do a follow-up session, I think, Dr. Greg, to be able to get more in there. I, I normally end by asking, what's one of the greatest mindset shifts that you've had in your life? And I mean, obviously, do, the work that you're doing about your belief systems is, but it doesn't have to be connected to that. Just one of those like, wow, that changes how I show up or look at uh, look at life. That I'm in control of my emotions. That That's the biggest mindset shift was... If if someone can do something and it it creates a reaction in you, an emotional reaction, then they have control over you. They control your emotional reaction. They control your emotions. And so that is a, uh, I'll use the word slavery, but if, if yeah. they're controlling you, then you are a slave to them yeah. and their control. Yeah. And so what I realized is, is that maturity is actually being able to control your emotions and your thoughts around what is actually happening. That's literally what maturity actually is. And so many people never really fully mature because they're reactive to everything happening around them all yeah. the time. Yeah. So the biggest revelation I had was basically, look, when something occurs, if I have an emotion, I can externally look at that emotion and go, that's interesting. Why is that emotion, hap emotion happening? And what is it trying to tell me? And then using it from that perspective, I can go, oh, that's funny. That makes me angry. Yeah. Why does that make me angry? Oh, it makes me angry because of this. Oh, and then I can introspectively go down that, that rabbit hole to find why that actually occurred. And then that person doesn't have control over me. So someone can walk up to me and, 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 you know, do say whatever, uh, to me about me. And I'm like, well, you know, are you done? Um, there, there's a guy named Sen Guru. I don't know if you ever listened to him, but mm -hmm. Sen Guru talks about that. And he's like, you know, okay. Yeah. Thank you. I, I have a meeting I have to get to, Yeah, you, know, <laughs> you don't, you don't control my emotions. So, yeah. um, are, are you done with your outrage? You are. Okay. Thank you. I'm yeah. going to move on. And if you can have that kind of control, man, your life yeah. is so much. And I don't mean suppress. I mean, control. Yeah. Big difference. The yeah. emotion comes up. You feel it. You go, Why am I feeling that? Yeah. Uh, we were watching uh, a movie last night. And in the movie, uh, one of the family members dies in the movie. And, you know, these emotions come up. Well, why is that? It's because I love my family. That's not a bad emotion. Yeah. I don't want that. I don't want that experience yeah. to happen, you know, in my family and so on. Yeah. So it's just, it's there. It's an emotion. Oh, that is such a powerful shift, such a power. And it comes circles back, I think, to what we were talking about earlier. It's about that choice, right? Between mm -hmm. every stimulus and response, there is, uh, you know, that pause and we get to choose. That's such a value. And as you were saying, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, remember what, the maturity piece. I remember growing up, oh, they made me so mad about this or then. And then I see with the kids and it's like, nobody can make you feel a particular, you get to choose how you're going to respond. You're going to choose your emotional reaction to it. So what a... 
what a powerful lesson. So where can people learn more about you, Dr. G? Yeah, uh, so the, the best way, I've actually prepared a, a mini course about all this information. Um, and so I'll give them a, a free mini course. They can go and check that out. Oh, it's yeah. um, got multiple different uh, modules with multiple different things and we've put PDFs and whatever in it. But I just want people to be able to use this information to improve their their lives, you know, improve their their future, you know, and, and make now more content and more happy and, and, and joyous. So yeah. um, it's fixyourbs.net, fixyourbs.net. That's where they can find the mini course and um, go and check it out. And, and what I'd love for them to do is check it out, take the action. Nothing happens until you take action. Yeah, I was just so going to say you that. you have to take action. <laughs> like, so yeah, I've had so many people over, you know, over the last year log in and they, they sign up for it and then they don't do anything. And yeah. I'm like, well, nothing happens until you actually do something. Absolutely. So, do it and then share your your response or your your end result with me. You can go to um, at Dr. Greg personally, or you can go to at Fix Your BS, either one. But I'd be I'd, I would love to. You know, we do this work for a reason. Cindy, you yeah. do this work for a reason. You want to help people. You want to help people change their lives. Yeah. And the more we hear about it, I'm telling you, to people that are listening or watching, the more we hear about it as influencers or as coaches or as life coaches or whatever you want to call us. Yeah. The, the the more impact we know we're making and it makes it more fulfilling for us as well because we know we've impacted you. So please take advantage of that. That was beautiful. And we will make sure to put that in the show notes as well. Again, that is fixyourbs.net. We'll put that in the show notes. But I'd say take action on two fronts. One, don't just go, oh, that's kind of cool. Go make sure you actually get it and then follow up and actually do it. So thanks so much for being with us today, Dr. G. This has been fabulous. Lots of uh, great information. And as you say, the more we hear this, the more we start living into this, the better our life is. So thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for having me, Cindy. I appreciate it. And for our listeners, I know you got lots of value from this episode. Make sure to share it. These are important messages, particularly, I mean, it, that has always been the case, but particularly post-COVID, go and share this message with people in your life that you care about and that you think could get some value from it. And let's face it, that's everybody, frankly. And before we sign off today, just wanted to share a few ways we can work together as well. If you happen to be looking to up-level your negotiation skills, because all of life is a negotiation. So if you want to negotiate your best life, I've got everything from group to one-on-one -on -one mastermind and VIP to online courses as well, so that you can tap into your innate power and better leverage it to get more of what you want and deserve in life. You can check that out at artoffemininenegotiation.com if that sounds interesting. Interesting. And make sure to grab my book, The Art of Feminine Negotiation, How to Get What You Want from the Boardroom to the Bedroom. And we will also make sure to put uh, a link to uh, Dr. G's book in our show notes for you as well. Make sure you check that out. If you're not growing, you're dying. So <laughs> make sure you stay in growth mode. And that is a wrap for this episode. So until next time, go forth and negotiate your best life on your terms so you can stop missing out and start getting more of what you want and deserve from the boardroom to the bedroom. Until next time, take care.